I am part of an invisible movement. This movement has no manifesto, it has no structure, it has no hero, it has no title. This is a revolution in storytelling, consisting of musicians, poets, filmmakers, technologists, creatives, developers. We have one objective, to inspire you through the power of storytelling. As we move into this era of virtual reality, augmented reality, AI, neurogaming, so much emerging medias, it's not the technology, the cool tech that gets us excited. It's what we can do with it. How we can empower you, the participant, user or player, through storytelling. This isn't a time of when video games first came out. It's a different era now. This is a time where we as filmmakers and creatives are championing the cause. We are not going to let it be a generation of testosterone-fueled experiences. We're here now, and we're going to seize control of the media in a way that can empower you. We're more akin to the scholar of Joseph Campbell, who sees and understood the power of myth. And we're here to make our stories be the myth for a modern age, where we can influence you and guide you in a way through storytelling. So my contribution to the cause is neurogaming. Neurogaming is where neuroscience meets gameplay. It's where your mind becomes a remote control for a media-like experience. I create live action video games, which you will watch and interact with by putting an EEG headset on your brain. That will read the algorithms of your brain and send a signal to my films, and then it will change the narrative arc. So your brain, <laughs> it's perfect you made that expression, your brain, <laughs> your brain is the remote control for the film. My objective is that the, the interactive film that you're a part of is going to show back to you your state of mind, and it will teach you about yourself. Then when you step out of this immersive world, and you step into the real world, you can take the knowledge that you've learned to empower yourself. But before I go any further, let me just backtrack a little bit and tell you why I make these films, and also about the first time I actually had to hack my own brain. So about nine years ago, I was having to hack my brain, and I'll use the analogy of an erasing install, because you're familiar with that in terms of with a computer. So with a computer, as you know, you have to erase and install when things are becoming very effective and things are slowing down and it's just not working, it's just not moving forward. It's a very evasive, dramatic, final process. I had to basically do an erase and install on myself. It was something because I was at a point in my life where I needed to take a leap of faith and I just wasn't able to move through fear. I had to download the software of the courage to move through fear. I was at a point where I was trying to leave my job, which was a very exciting, dramatic, on the outside, glamorous job in the music industry, where I was directing music videos, documentaries, and TV commercials. This was very exciting, very engrossing, very glamorous. However, I felt a sense of frustration because I wasn't able to use the power of storytelling to empower people. I felt that, at that time, the user of the recipient of my message was just that, they were absorbing a message. And I felt that th this should be more of a co-creative process where you are part of this media experience. I would be projecting onto people images of culture or beauty or identity that I myself didn't believe in. And I felt that that's not what I should be doing with my craft. So nine years ago, at the same time of, I was in my boss's office and I was about to try and give my notice in. I was trying to take that leap of faith. At the same time, I just started doing, two years prior, parkour. Now, parkour is, you might know the official terminology, it's an urban inner city sport, but what parkour really is, is a philosophy to control your mind and mold your mind, but through your body. It's a way that it teaches you how to go through obstacles, round obstacles, over obstacles, under obstacles, because there's only one rule in parkour, is that you're never, ever supposed to stop. You've just got to keep on going. You've got to keep focused. You have to be relentless in your ambition. You have to be comfortable with fear. Fear isn't something which should be something you're awkward with. It's something you should embrace. 
So having done parkour, I was standing in my boss's office, and I said, I'm going to give my notice in. And I saw it as a huge jump, where if I fell, I would die and perish. And it was really far, and I didn't think I was going to make it. But the minute I gave my notice in, I actually realized it was a really tiny step. It wasn't even a leap of faith. It was just a sense of belief. And that the surface that I'd come from, if I'd stayed there any longer, that's where I would have perished. Because as a creative person, it's almost like a slow death, not utilizing your talent. And it was really important for me to start my journey and move forward. So I was inspired by the transformational process that parkour had on me, and I felt compelled to use the psychology that I myself had gone through, through the power of parkour, and create that and emphasize that and recreate that through my art of filmmaking. And then I started to make interactive, immersive work, and then that moved into neurogaming. That's where I started to create my project Sync Self 1 and Sync Self 2. Sync Self is the concept similar to the Raise and Install, where it's bowed in the question to you, if you were a mobile device, are you running the latest operating system? <laughs> Am I running Karen 2016 or Karen 2014? I personally would like to be running Karen 2017 or 18, but that comes with a conviction and a belief and a sense of moving through your fear. So just to elaborate on the experience, there would be a colossal screen. You would put the EEG headset on your brain. In the film would be free runners, who I work with um, and train with, parkour generation athletes and you would look at the film and they would, the free runners would be doing parkour. And as they're doing big leaps, if you're not focused in your mind, the data will then take it to a different narrative path where the free runner will fall, they won't make the challenge. If you're focused, the free runner in the film will make, overcome the obstacle. It's a way to train your brain, it's a way to develop yourself, it's a way to understand yourself better using the dynamic metaphor of parkour. What happened with this project is that magic started to happen. What happened is that I started to see the people as the projector, projecting their own reality onto the film, and it revealed their state of mind. So if they were focused, it would give them the data feedback. If they weren't focused, it would give them an indication of how to become more focused. People with ADHD were able to monitor and see what was fluctuating. Different people around the world were able to interact with the game and have different experiences. There was a part of the film where you ha there's a part saying, oh, I can't do it, I can't do it. When I, I was playing that with somebody in Sheffield, and their mother was watching it, and the young man, who's about 25, he was playing it, and when it got to, I can't do, I can't do it, she said, that's my boy, that's my boy. I said, what happened? Because his focus level went extremely high, and she realized that she could see the tenacity in her son. When I played that with somebody else in Sweden, a young lady was doing extremely well. When it got to the point where the voices were saying, I don't think I can do it, her level plummeted. The professor told me she suffered with depression. And when I asked her, why did you do that? She said, oh, the voice is in my head. So what happens with my work is that it reflects the world around you. If you're focused, if you're calm, that's what that will reflect in the film. If you're not, it will give you the data feedback, it will give you the indication and the direction of how to improve. That's, to me, the power of media. It's not supposed to be a, just a receptive device that we're not interacting with. It's something that we should be part of us and should change us. That's what art is about. So where Sync Self and my previous project simulated the experience of being a free runner. My new project, Riot, simulates the experience of being in a riot. Very much inspired by what I'm seeing in terms of potential social unrest, I kind of felt a need to express that, but in a way which was people could immerse themselves in and learn from. So where Sync Self was about understand yourself and focus your mind, Riot is about navigating your way through life but using the metaphor of a riot to do so. The objective with riot is that you start off uh, in a social protest that turns into a riot, and then your objective is just to get home alive, and you're going to interact with lots of different characters. So you stand in the middle of a 360-degree screen, you hear the sound of a petrol bomb go over your head, the screen lights up, a policeman runs in front of you with a gun and says, don't move. If you respond aggressively, you'll have a different narrative arc than if you respond passively. The different characters you come into contact with will elicit different response from you. They could be um, authority, they could be empathy. 
And if you want to cultivate those characteristics, then that we, the game can feed back to and tell you how to do that. I'm fortunate to be working with some of the pioneering people in this area. I'm working with Brunel University London, the computer science department, in particular, Dr. Hongying Meng. And the game, how it will monitor you, will be through facial recognition, voice recognition, muscle, sweat, breath, the particular ways that we're currently researching and development. We want this to be a complete and total all-body experience. That's what, to me, storytelling is. Storytelling, living in this age and now, with technology, should be nothing else. But with my number one objective, to make you understand yourself and know yourself better. So to me, the future is hacking the brain. We're living in a time where, as I said, it's all about connecting with technology. But how are we using technology? About 20, 30 years ago, there was this revolution in physical movement, where it's all about going to the gym and working on your body and the fitness of your body. But I believe the future will be about the gym of the mind and making that revolution happen in your mind, because there's no point having a strong body and a weak mind. Imagine with a smartwatch on your wrist that you could interact with like a narrative sequence and you'll be able to, it will be able to monitor your breath rate and your heart rate. And then as you interact with the film, the characters will respond to how nervous you are or how focused you are. That to me is storytelling. That's going to tell you a lot more about yourself than your fitness app is telling you in a much more engaging way. And to me, that is the future of storytelling, using technology in a way which can make a fundamental difference to us. So now you know that we're amongst you, from, <laughs> is I would just invite you to be aware of how you use technology in your day-to-day -day life. Don't just automate, automatically pick up an app or listen to music or watch a film. Be aware of what the messages is saying back to you. I'm fortunate enough that I was able to see in my cycle of commitment and my leap of faith that I could turn the, the user into the projector of their own reality. They don't, don't always have to be the unwilling participant in someone else's story, because I honestly believe that then transpires into your life. If I can help you take control of a simulated film, I believe I can help you take control of your life through your emotions. So that's what I see the future of, and my covert brethren, who so I'm sure I haven't even met, I've only met a few, but I know they're out there, and we're committed to the cause. So next time you're kind of susceptible to these things, just question yourself and take a subconscious step back. Be aware of what's influencing you, so that when our work comes to the forefront, you're ready for it, so that we can help you hack your brain. Thank you.